Hello. I have a little special guest with me Hi. today. Melissa's with me today. Hi, everyone. We have been going all day long. Um, we have been. It's we, been fun. We did. We filmed a very special long haul. Don't tell the special part to it. We have a special little surprise that we remember did. remember what it was. The very end of like where we went after the haul. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we have yeah. a little surprise yes, for you guys yes. that is not expected and I don't think has ever been done in a haul video before ever. I don't think so. So we did a shopping haul of beauty products and then we did something very... <laughs> Okay, so Can we do it again sometime? Yeah, but somewhere different, I think. Can we do it for longer? Because I was left a little unfulfilled. We can't unfulfilled. talk about it. Ah, I can't talk about it. No, I'm just saying I feel a little unfulfilled, so I think longer is. Better. I feel unfulfilled too. You know what I mean? Longer yeah, is so. Yeah. <laughs> but we've had a good day. We've had a great day. And it's been really fun. I mean, I haven't and seen you since like in three days. I know. It's a long time. <laughs> I'm starving right now. We're and discussing we're Olive Garden. We're discussing Olive Garden and we got, I got a venti mm -hmm. iced coffee and Melissa didn't know what to do because she doesn't drink coffee. So I got her the pink drink, which I feel like is going to go in the trash as mm -hmm. soon as she gets home. She's it's like, oh no, I love it. I love the pink drink. No, it's going in the fridge. <laughs> I'll put some ice over it. Cheers. Thanks for my pink drink. We had fun. We had a great Although, time. Although, Melissa's been a little obsessed with having to take the perfect picture to put. She's like, oh my god, I don't like my smile. My smile's crooked. Because, okay, here's the thing. I'm just, like, almost done with my Invisalign treatment. And so, I'm just like, I need to make, like, when I see it in pictures, I'm like, does that tooth need to be 1 14th oh, of god. a millimeter moved to the right? And so then I'm questioning if I'm really, because once you sign off that you're done, like you're done. So I can't go back to my dentist and be like, I don't like the way that tooth looks. So I'm super paranoid about my pictures. This tooth is longer. Look. It's basically because you're a vampire though. Uh -huh. Do you see it? I think they look fine, Melissa. I think they look good. No, they look so much. I, I mean, I could definitely tell. I'm very happy with how they turned out with but yeah, it was a great day. At least you don't have those like metal braces like back in the day like I had to have. I had those. No, I had those and this is like finishing up what I didn't get done on my regular. I never wore my retainer. Did you? No, that's why I had I can Invisalign. remember going to the orthodontist and I yeah. would literally the night before put it in the hottest water you possibly could. So it looks like. So it looked like it was, so it would fit in my mouth. It would like, you know, I would mold it into my teeth the next morning <laughs> and then I'd be like, I would go like this and then they'd say, okay, open wide and I go, I would pop out. <laughs> See, I had a headgear and I. You had a headgear? Yeah. Oh my God, Melissa, don't tell anybody that. Listen, <laughs> back in the day, and I- You were basically Romeo and Michelle's high school totally, reunion. <laughs> totally, My Michael Jackson folder, my Trapper Keeper, and- Oh my God, Trapper Keepers, I, I forgot all about that. You know, you can buy those on eBay, but they're like $150. Okay, let me tell you what is so sad. We went into this vintage store today. This is not part of our haul, but we went into this vintage store that was in the mall. It was like upscale vintage. It would be a fun haul, the vintage shopping. It would and be. Profitable. Yeah, but like at all my places that are reasonable, this place was like quite expensive. Quite, quite expensive. Yeah, it was in a really high-end mall, so everything is marked up, like... Yeah, but they had some it. stuff that was... But, okay, they had, like, Saucony sweatshirts. Oh, they and they, did? Yeah, and Ferenz sweatshirts. Yeah. And it was, like, stuff that, like, my friends wore in high school, you oh, know? Right. And, like, it was stuff that, like, I wore in high school, and... Uh, but it was all, like... It'd be, like, some little striped t-shirt. 69 dollars 69 Do they have a Trapper Keeper? They had like, no, but they had like pins and stuff like that. And I was like, do you remember those pins that have like at the top? The top, different colors! Yes! I mean, just they have, did you not see it? I have a whole bunch at my house. Anyway, do you want one? No, I don't. I'm good. Vic makes them and they're all different colors. And there's like red and blue and black and I think green. Did you have the candy color. cane pins? I still have them. I bet you have Halloween pins, don't you? Absolutely. Well, anyways, yeah, it was a great day, and so I think we should do a vintage down in Broad Ripple, like the, um... We're trying to think of other halls to do. Yeah, so, comment below. We should always do, like, a surprise at the end of the hall, though, that nobody would know about. I agree. Because like, then, nobody's gonna expect this from the hall. Mm -hmm. Like, they're gonna, oh, Melissa and Peter, so they think they're big shit, they're going on a beauty hall. Who care? I love beauty Oh, and so. then they do this at the end of it. And it's super exciting. Okay, so... It was, like, an added bonus. But we were trying to think of other things to do. So we're going to do like the five below mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Dollar Tree Dollar Store. Yeah, yeah. But maybe if we like did it to then like host a party or something. Like we put in the comment section below like what you think we could do if we did it at the end. Like what we could yeah. do with it. Like we could all, we could like go shopping just for like having a barbecue or something. And like we could like try to do it like on a budget. Like we have to find everything we need for barbecue. But do we have to buy the hot dogs at the Dollar oh, Tree? That's a good I'm, idea. Like because I'm weird out buying some, random meat at the Dollar Store. I'm just saying that canned ham does not look good. I'm I agree with you. I wouldn't be. But buying you, know, you could probably spam. Be, you could you could buy chips and baked beans and buns at the Dollar Tree. But I think the meat is where I'm gonna have to like draw the line. But well, we could figure out something else. Like I how to, would be fun. How though. to put together like a high end party? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Oh, like an afternoon tea or something. On a budget. On a budget. Yeah, that'd based be really on the fun. Tree. I think that would be really fun. And then basically, we're event planners. Basically. <laughs> I mean, basically. I'm going back to my old event planner. We did a day. disclaimer at the beginning of uh, the oh, haul God. video. I said, okay, just so everybody knows, like, Melissa and I are both like, <laughs> and, I, and she's like, I will talk over Peter and cut him off. Just and I so said, everybody I will do knows. The same. Yes. And, um, but we didn't do it too bad today. No, I'm trying to be more con like conscientious of me talking over you. Good, because you're rude. I'm so rude. <laughs> no, you're not. Listen. I do it just as much. That's true. That's true. Are you surprised the salon first does not go out of business? Like, seriously? Well, who's buying fur coats today I don't in 2018? Know. Like, I agree. I'd be embarrassed to wear a fur coat. Like, I agree. seriously. Someone donated one to the rescue first to sell, and I was like, uh, Somebody dedicated. Dedicated. Somebody donated. donated a fur coat to an animal rescue. Yeah, for us to sell for money, and I'm like, I, I yeah, I can't do that. Um, no, no, ma'am. Melissa's been trying to get. Oh, I shouldn't say this. Well, you can say it. Melissa's been trying to like get a lot of sponsorships for the animal animal yeah, rescue, yeah. and they have a website, and they were selling these socks. That said. Well, here's the thing. They said fuck off on them. And Melissa's like, okay, I'm like trying to legit get like Like simple. get like family owned businesses that would like to sponsor our rescue. So they can't go to the website and see socks that say fuck off. Fuck <laughs> off. I feel like it's just like a conflict of interest. I got a lot of resistance about that. Actually. I know you did. I think it's kind of funny actually. I did. But I was, I'm trying to keep the, I'm trying to keep um, the I'm the president image. and I'm making a direct dictatorship. <laughs> no, the old rescue used to be a dictatorship. This is more of a it was the girl who ran it was like a dictator what is this a democracy <laughs> but at some point I have to be like no ma'am you can't like well you can't and you're in it people. for the rescue yeah she like, is like all the time I'll be like I'll call her I'll be like what are you doing she's like well I'm like traveling to Ohio to go transport a dog and I'm like she does this all the time I'm like you oh should come God. with me sometime I want to I would really love bad. the company because it gets lonely on the road it does really though well, all right. So we're gonna get off here. Yeah. We might go to the Olive Garden. We might go to the Olive Garden. If we do, I will vlog that and let you guys know. I mean, okay. not the Olive Garden because they're always playing. And then Italiana. What's the song? What's an Italian song? I don't know, song? but I like their salad. Mamma mia. <laughs> Is that it? No. Is that the song? I've never seen that movie actually. Wait, or do you the know musical. they're remaking it? Yeah, I heard. Or two. They're to part two or something. Oh, so it's not the original remade? I don't know. I've never seen the original and I don't really care. I just like ABBA though. Mama I guess it's Mia. Gotta... Here we go. I don't know. Here we go again. Na na. How can I? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to get off here. Bye. Bye. Hello. It is 1 a.m. On the dot. Oh, 101 now. And it is the end of a very long day. It has been such a long day today. I have gotten so much accomplished today. My foot is itching me. But I got so much done. And I had such a fun day today. It was so great. And, um... Yeah, so... And just now, I was like... Well, I left Tanya's. I'll tell you about that in a second, but... I was so tired on my way home. I was like, I am so tired. Like, I need to pull it together so I can go um, vlog. And um, I got home and I was like uploading this video that Melissa and I did together today, which I'm gonna save probably till I'm on vacation to post. Um, and I was like, so exhausted just sitting there and then Boo Radley was like standing right next to me and I, I grabbed him and I said let's go upstairs and see your dad and see your brothers Alex went to bed like as soon as he got home at like 10 30 and um like 10 10 30 and then um well, he like took the dogs out and gave PB his medicine and then he like was asleep like that so I went upstairs and Tucker and PB were like in bed and they were just like sitting there like chewing on toys and um so I grabbed Boo Radley and I laid in bed for a second. I literally laid there for like 10 minutes, just like petting Boo Radley. And I like, all of a sudden I got like real awake. <clears throat> and um, I was like all of a sudden wide awake again. And now I like got my second wind and I'm wide awake. And I was just listening to uh, She's Come Undone. I'm so into this, you guys. And you know what is so funny? So we're reading She's Come Undone from my book club. And, um, what's so interesting about it is 
I honestly, I don't, like, I remember bits and pieces of the book, kind of like the direction it goes in, but I don't really remember reading this, and I said to Tanya tonight, I said, have you ever read She's Come Undone by Wally Lamb? Now, I know that we've talked about Wally Lamb before because um, I think it was his second book that she and I have talked about, which is called This Much I Know Is True. Um, and it's about a brother who has another... He has a brother that's schizophrenic and his mom passes away and so he ends... He's like 40 and he has to take care of his schizophrenic brother, if I remember what that's about. And it's a lot about mental health and it's extremely long and it was extremely fantastic. And um, and I just love that line anyway, this much I know is true. So for a title, it's just so profound. And um, so I said, have you ever read She's Come Undone? And Tony goes, it's my favorite book of life. I said, seriously? And I said, yeah. I, she said, yeah. And I said, you know, I'm reading it for like our book club that I'm doing. And she goes, are you really? And I said, yeah. And I said, you know what is so funny is like, I don't, I didn't remember a lot of this book. Like, and I will say this about the audible narration. I did not like it for like 10 minutes. And now I love the narrator. Like she's fantastic. And um, she's perfect for Dolores, who's the main character. But there are just some lines in this book. Like it's, it floats between like, it is so true to life. Like, it really reminds me a lot of my mom. I think that's why I really... Like, my mom's storytelling. And I think that's why I really like it so much. But it floats between being absolutely hilarious and being almost painfully real. And I don't know, like, how he does it, but it's literally genius how he weaves together this humor with this just absolute sadness at the same time. And it's like, Dolores is like, there's this one scene when these twins are like making fun of her and she's like scared of these twins that live on her street. And she's trying to like be nice to them. And she's like, my name's Dolores, what's your name? And so um, like the next day she walks by, I literally last night, I mean, I was like laughing out loud in my car listening to it. I listened to like an hour and a half of it last night. And, um, they're like the one the one twin is like what did you say your name was again and she was like Dolores and she he, and she goes oh i thought it was fucky face and it's just this okay and the timing is like she's so my mom was born in 43 and it takes place it starts in 56 and she's 4 years old which means she would have been born in 52 so she's like 10 years younger than my mom but like so much of it like reminds me of my mom's upbringing you know and you know my mom was raised by a single mother and Dolores is just a, this perfect character because she's so flawed, you know? And I really love that. I love when people are just so willing to show their flaws and not act like they're perfect. Like, th there is, like, this is going to sound so bad, especially since I do a lot of, like, you know, beauty influencer videos and all that kind of stuff. But there is something to me that is lacking interest in a perfect person. Like, you know when you get on Instagram and you see these people and they have, like, the perfect body, the perfect face? Like, that is so not interesting to me whatsoever. Like, it, it just is not interesting to me. I like people that expose their flaws, you know? And I'm not saying that there are not beautiful, physically beautiful people that I find physically attractive, because I do. But what I'm saying is that for me to be entertained or for somebody to keep my attention as a friend, as a celebrity, as a romantic partner, they have to have some flaws. You know what I mean? Like one of the things I like about my husband is that my, I love my husband. I think he is one of the most gorgeous men I've ever met in my entire life. But like there's a messiness about him too that I appreciate. Like, even though like like he's so into taking these pictures on Instagram, and it's like where he's got like the outfit and he's very posed. You know, he loves these fashion like bloggers on Instagram. So I think he's kind of trying to like emulate that a little bit. And he loves fashion. He always has. You know, but like he takes these pictures. But the thing is that he doesn't understand that's so endearing about it is that there's always like something just a little off about it. And I love that. Like, not that there's something wrong with it. That's not what I mean. Like, like he just is always like, I don't know. It's like, he just, he doesn't like, there's always something to me. Like, like maybe his hair is a little ruffled in one area. It's just not speaking of hair, but like, it's just like, he's just not this perfect specimen. And th that's very sexy to me, you know, of somebody that is, you know, able to just not be this perfect example 
of what they think the world expects of them, you know? I mean, I've had friends in my life that couldn't even go to the CVS or the Walmart and let's say, you know, were completely made up for the day, and it just was... So, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's sad, you know, I think, to some degree, and I just, like, real stories and real people are, like, you know, attractive to me. It's like when Alex and I were sitting there yesterday, and we were watching that movie, you know, um, After Time, and it, the scene when the, the, the scene when his dad dies, I don't want to, like, to spoil things for people, but it's not going to ruin the movie for you. The scene right before his dad dies, and they have, like, one last time together, and he takes him back to when he's a kid, and they're running on the beach. Like, I'm, like, ugly crying, right? And I look over at my husband, and he's, like, sobbing. And it's just, like, that, to me, is, like, for somebody to show, like, emotion or realness, like, I, I like, that, to me, is attractive, you know? Like, I don't need to see perfection. Like, it's, I think it's very easy especially in 2018 with makeup, clothes, filters, you know, um, whatever is out there, Botox, you know, all of it. I think it's very easy to achieve this look of perfection, but then I don't think it's easy to show that you're a real human being. And I think that what happened was that people were so afraid of really showing that they were, I don't know, I have gone off on a tangent, that people were so afraid of showing that they're like a real human being for so long, you know, that like, th they kind of got away from that. And then this idea of what perfect is, we became obsessed with. And I don't know, it's just, it's that, that does not interest me, you know? It's like I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about, like, the first time that I, like, you know, I always thought my husband was attractive when I met him, but, like, two weeks in, we're dating, and he took me to the jazz kitchen, and he and his cousin, I've told this story in here before, but they entered a uh, salsa contest, and it was, we were at this bar that, like, one night a week, they have, like, a Latin music night, and they do salsa contests and stuff, and I'll never forget, he had, like, this orange v-neck t-shirt on, and um, he used to, Alex used to always wear like driving shoes and he had these like gray dr driving shoes. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like moccasins almost kind of. And I'll never forget like him moving like on the dance floor and um, his hair was longer, you know, and like not long, but longer. And it was like falling in his face and he was just sweating like crazy. And he just looked to me like he was so into the enjoying the dancing of it and just like the smile on his face like he wasn't out there trying to impress anybody he was just being in the moment this love of music and dance with his cousin you know and it just for me like like that's a moment in time that I'll always remember you know and um I think that's like why sometimes like when I wake up on Sundays and I look over at him you know and he's got two dogs hanging off of him and you know he's sitting there in a pair of basketball shorts and a tank top and I'm like yeah that's my man right there. You know what I mean? Like, that's my man not trying to be this perfect example of, you know, what he thinks looks good on Instagram. But at the same time, I love the fact that he enjoys that stuff, you know, and I, and I try to support him in that because that's something that he it really is interested in, you know? But I do think it's kind of somewhat sad and superficial that we've like fallen into this world and you know, I did this whole video on my Peterisms channel today about, you know, insecurities and um, I actually titled it afterwards, and I wish I had come up with the title before, because <clears throat> the title I thought was like a good title, and it was, I mean, and I'm saying that like pat my own back, but I liked what the title inferred, but it, the video wasn't as much about that as I wish it was, and it was that my insecurities are part of who I am, and, or my insecurities are part of me. But you know, like, our insecurities are a part of who we are, and those things that we don't like about ourselves, those, those you know, those insecurities, those imperfections that I think that we're trying to perfect or get over, you know, are usually the reasons why we have our hair a certain way. And don't get me wrong, I love to look nice and take a nice picture and have people compliment me and say you're good looking. And I mean, I like that. Why Why wouldn't we like that, right? Like, why wouldn't we like that? And, um, one of the things I love is somebody that physically takes care of themselves, but at the same time, they're just like a, such a fucking amazing person. They would do anything for anybody, you know, and they don't mind getting their, you know, hands dirty at the same time or throwing their hair back, you know, in a ponytail or a hat or whatever and being a little rough around the edges. 
but at the same time, they love getting dressed up too and looking nice. Like, you know, and then there's somebody that like, if you need, if you need them, you call them and they're like, Hey, like, yeah, let's talk. You know, what can I do for you? And they're just somebody that's beautiful inside and out. Like, I, I feel like I meet very few people like that. And when I do, like, they just wow me, you know, like, I'm just like, like, this is, and, and, and those people I think are born that way. I really do. And I think that sometimes like, you know, you could take a six or a seven person. You could take a 10. Have you ever seen like somebody that's a 10 physically, but they're so nasty inside that it brings them down to like a six. But then you meet like a six or a seven person that their, their personality is just so exuberant and they're just so beautiful inside. And they're just so wonderful that when you're around them, like you're just like so enamored of them that they're really like a nine, 10 for you. Right. But then when you meet somebody that's like physically, and I mean, it's, and I don't just mean like, oh, they're magazine picked pretty. I mean, they're pretty for whatever is attractive to you, but then they're, you know, their insights match that and they're just a, the cool per, a cool person, you know, and they're literally like off the charts. And, um, but you know, I think it's interesting too, like things that we, like everybody finds something different that's attractive, but you know, like when people ask me like, okay, Peter, like what are things that you find attractive? And it's funny because it's not like really a lot of things that my husband has, like, um, I think, like, okay, like, Alex has, like, random, like, little freckles, you know? Um, and I think freckles are sexy. And, um, and I have a friend of mine, this woman, and she's, like, 40, and she has red hair, and she didn't want any, she hates her freckles, and she's always trying to hide them. I'm like, show your freckles. I love freckles so much, you know? I love things that are different about people, and they allow them to shine through, you know, like spaces and teeth, and, you know, I love somebody that's a little bit bigger and accentuates it and isn't afraid to show off their body, you know? Um, I love all of that. I love when people show that they have worked through their insecurities and they're comfortable in who they are now, you know? And I don't know. I don't know how I got on this whole conversation, but I don't even know where it started. I was talking about my video that I did today, but I kind of wish I had talked more about that because I really do believe that our insecurities are really part of our journey. They're part of who we are. And when we deny them and we, you know, when we don't accept our insecurities, you know, like whether it's people making fun of my voice or people making fun of my mannerisms or people looking at my weight or, you know, whatever it is, being gay or, you know, being in recovery or having been an addict or an alcoholic. When you look at all those things, those things that have been like hard for me. And I think the hardest for me have been like my voice, my mannerisms. I think those would be the two things I'm most insecure about and my weight, you know, but when you get to a point where you realize a lot of the issues that I've had to go through when dealing with those specific insecurities, had I not gone through those journeys of people making fun of me or people saying things to me, like, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. I wouldn't be a stronger person. I wouldn't be, you know, like, I wouldn't have had the feeling of what it's like to be, you know, made fun of or to be bullied or whatever, which, you know, I'm not like, oh, that's the greatest thing in the entire world. Yes. I'm so thankful I'm bullied. I was bullied, but at the same time, it's made me more sensitive to other people. It's made me, um, understand the plight of other people uh, on some smaller level. You know, it's made me understand that it's harder to be kind and compassionate. It really is. You know, it's, a, it's real easy to be a bitch and be nasty and, um, but it's, it's harder to sometimes get trained to be a kind person, a compassionate person. But then over time, you know, it's like, it kind of just becomes part of who you are. And I think like, it, but you still have to work on it. I think, you know, like I'm very sarcastic, obviously. And I have to kind of work with that because a lot of the people that I'm friends with, don't, they're not like used to that kind of sarcasm all the time. Well, I was raised with a father that's incredibly sarcastic. So I think that you have to acknowledge the fact that your insecurities are part of who you are and you wouldn't be who you were had you not ever had those insecurities to begin with. The trick is not letting them rule you for the rest of your life, you know, respecting the journey that you've been through and what you've learned by having those insecurities. That's the trick. And I'm not there yet. You know, like I, I still have things that are, are painful for me when people say it and I'm not going to act like they aren't, you know they still kind of hit a chord with me, especially if people say them in a certain way. And 
And I don't know that I can even give you an example of what that certain way is. I just know it when I hear it. You know what I mean? And, um, but anyway, so yeah, I was talking about that video today. But anyway, so I, this morning, got up, and then I, uh, you guys are like, you were in this real deep conversation, then you just, boom, flipped it to, the, well, you know how I do. So, uh, here was something that I got on my, uh, my haul today. Well, I got, okay, I'm gonna try this one, this Kiehl's lip balm that I love, because I think it was Hassie that sent me the other ones. This is mango. Oh my God, it smells so good. That guy finally turned his brights off behind there, thank God. That was annoying. Oh my God, that is fantastic. That is literally like eating a mango. I mean, I'm not even lying to you. And I love mango. Mangoes are some of my favorite fruits. Um, so, I got up, and Melissa and I had decided that we were going to do this haul today. And so, we ended up... So, I had to go and pick up PP and my medication first at Costco because we were completely out. And Alex had called in PP's medication to the vet, and then the vet had to call it into Costco on Saturday. So I had to go get it. Like his last dose we had was from last night. So I had to go this morning so we could get his dose this morning. And I didn't even realize that we had like two of the medications, but not all three. And so I refilled and got all three of them. So now we have like extra medications for the dog, which is fine because we always run out of it anyway. Um, and then, well, I mean, we don't run out of it, but we always run out of it, like, at the last minute, I have to call it in, you know, like, I'm like, oh, we have to go tomorrow and get the medicine. So, anyway, um, I went and I picked up the medication, and then I came back, and then I filmed two videos, the Peterism's video and my drama channel video, and I was gonna do something on my Peter Likes Books video, but it just got too late, and I just, or my Peter Likes, yeah, Peter Likes Books. <laughs> How could I forget the channel, my, my own channel name? Um, so, I didn't get to do a booktube video today, and um, then I took a shower and I got ready and then I went and picked up Melissa and then we did our haul vlog slash thing which has a little special surprise in there that I don't want to say because I don't want to ruin it and uh, yeah we had a really good time and we shopped for like two hours I have to turn on the air conditioning, guys. I'm so sorry, but it is, like, so hot in here. Um, we shot for, like, two hours, and then we did uh, the second part of the little video, and then I took her home because she had some things to do, and then she was like, I want to go out to eat, and I was like, well, I'm supposed to go out with Tanya and her son, so let me see if I can get a hold of them, and at the same time, like, Alex had gotten off work at, like, oh, like 5, 5.30, and so he had called his friend that he works with sometimes, and she met him to have like a glass of wine and appetizers at this restaurant called Napoli's, which is like one of his favorite restaurants ever. They have like little pizzas and stuff. It's like Mediterranean Italian, and it's like he loves it. Very kind of like, you know, shoo shoo and all that. So anyway, so he was there. Well, then Melissa was like, um, I'm really craving Olive Garden, and I was like, oh my God, I wanna go to Olive Garden. She was like, well, let me see if Aaron and Eric wanna go. So she texted Aaron, and Aaron was like, yeah, I'm down, and then I wanted to go, because I thought it'd be a lot of fun for all of us to go, and I texted Alex, and Alex is like, yeah, he was gonna go. He goes, I'll just meet you there when I'm done here. So I went home, and I did a live stream for an hour. I was like pumped all day today. I was like, I, was like, I got home, and I was like, I wanna do a live stream. So I did a live stream, it was a lot of fun, and um, I did it like in the middle of the day. So it was like, so we, we ate dinner at 8.15 and it, so I did it from seven to eight, like right from like seven, 7.05 to like 8.05. And, um, or maybe 8.06, I don't know. Maybe I went a minute over. And then I went and we ate at Olive Garden and we had such a blast. It was so much fun. And it was Alex and I, Melissa and Jason and Aaron and Eric. And yeah, we just had a really good time. Don't you just love when you have, like, couples or friends that you hang out with that are just easy? It's, like, just easy. You know what I mean? Like, and, uh, so, anyway, and then we, oh, 
So then we left and we stood outside and talked for a while. It was such a beautiful night. It was cooler in Indiana. It's 64 right now. It was like probably 75 then. It was like a really nice night. It was like, it just was a beautiful evening tonight in Indianapolis. And then, um, I'm like checking the time. And then I did the live stream early so I could go hang out with Tanya and her son because her son Nick is in town. And, um, he just finished his semester of school. And so I, like, he's in college. I guess he just changed his major. He was ch he was studying, like, neuroscience, and now he's he wants to go and study philosophy. And um, so he got three straight A's, 15 credit hours, three straight A's, or three A pluses and two A's. He got straight A's. Three A pluses, neuroscience. Very proud of this kid. He's like my nephew. Like, I've known him since he was three and a half, four. So, he's like my nephew. He calls me Uncle Pete. But, so we hung out, and actually, they were watching Friends. He and Tanya were watching Friends in, like, his old bedroom upstairs, and she's turned into a guest bedroom. And they were, like, on, like, laying on the bed, and, like, he got off, and I, like, was on the bed next to Tanya, like, <laughs> with friends in the background. And they're, like, we're all three of us, like, getting ready to fall asleep. And Tanya's, like, we need to go outside because I have a fire going down there. She had a fire going in the fire pit. And she's, like, we're going to fall asleep if we go out there. So we went out there, and we sat and talked, and Nick told us about changing schools and about his girlfriend, who I adore. She's awesome. And then, um... He talked about, we talked about, uh, oh, he's moving. They're renting a house in Florida right now, and they have, like, they each of them, they're, it's, he and his girlfriend, and then they're, like, one of their close friends, who I guess is moving back up here to Indianapolis to be with his girlfriend. They each pay $500, and they have, like, a legit, like, four-bedroom house with, like, a pool and a lanai and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, uh, sign me up. That's where I need to be right now. So anyway, he's moving back though. Look, I'm in the little town of Noblesville. If you're new to my channel, I sometimes, or not Noblesville, Zinesville. I sometimes drive through here just because it just, I don't know, I just think it's so homey. I love this town. You know what's interesting after like, um, I was talking about this and I was saying that my friend said to me that she didn't think that this would be real accepting of like gay couples. I, like, found out that two friends of mine that are gay couples live literally right up off the street um, in, like, that house, those little houses that I was talking about that I showed that I think are so cute. Look, there is a bell tower in that church, even. Can we just talk about that for a second? Look. Is that, is that not fantastic? I bet it's not a church, though. I bet it's something else. It's not. What is it? Oh, it's for sale. God, look at that. <gasps> Alex and I could move in there. Can you even imagine? And look, there's a, do you see there's a bell tower up there? I would love to live in there. So anyway. All these people have these like ginormous ferns like off their front porches. Oh, I'm so pissed. I am so pissed. Okay. These little front porches and stuff are so cute. Okay, let me just vent for a second, right? First of all, I spent more money than I needed to today um, in my haul because I'm I'm out of all of my normal colognes. I have like two or three colognes. I usually like um, Michael Kors for men, Chanel Blue, or this uh, YSL uh, Om Nui. And I'm like out of all three of them. Um, Michael Kors for men is typically the clone that I always wear. So I was like, I have a bottle of Creed that I finally got, but it's so expensive that I'm trying to like just use a little bit of it, right? But now it's like my daily cologne because I, I, I don't want to go through it, but, I, but I, it's the only cologne that I have. And Alex is like, has like 20 colognes, but like he always knows if I use, he'll be like, it smells like my Burberry in here. Do you use my Burberry? I'm like, okay. He's like, please don't go through my colognes. You know, I don't have a lot, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so I, today I bought a bottle of cologne. Cause I was like, I need a regular cologne to wear every day. Well, 
At the end of my haul, let me just say, and you know, I spent quite a bit of money today, okay? Probably more money than I should have. Melissa didn't really spend a lot of money. Um, I mean, not tons, but I spent like, I, I spent enough, and more money than I needed to. Well, I got this email from Wayfair, which is where we order our patio furniture. And um, so I wanted to see, because I paid for them to come and set it up and assemble it. I paid extra, and then for them to take everything away. And one of the reasons why I did that is, because our trash ser trash service, we can only have stuff that fits in our trash like can, like a trash bin. And anything over that, they won't take, except for like the last uh, trash day of the month. So I was like, I just want them to take it away and then they can take away the old patio stuff and then we don't have to worry about it, right? Because last year we had extra patio stuff that was like old and mildewed and we hadn't used it forever and it was sitting out there and they were doing construction and I asked the guy that um, does construction in our neighborhood because he's like redoing all the patios and the siding on the house. I asked him, I said, would you take the thing away? And he goes, yeah, absolutely. And then he joked with me after that and he was like, he was like, yeah, it's no problem. I'll just load it up my pickup truck and take it away. And then after that, he was like, now you know I did that for a case of beer, right? Well, here's the thing. I don't drink. I'm not buying alcohol for anybody, okay? And I said to him, if you want a case of beer, he's mentioned it to me so many times now. And I'm like, if you want a case of beer, you need to say something to my husband. Because my husband will buy you a case of beer, but I'm not going to buy somebody a case of beer. And I finally, like, said to him, I said, I don't drink. So, like, you know, I, I want to buy you and your guys a case of beer because I think it's the right thing to do. But you got to ask my husband because he'll do it. I, this is so stupid. But anyway, I just don't want to have to deal with a bunch of people taking shit away. This is like such suburban stuff, right? So if you're learning anything from this, learn this right here, okay? Gay couples are no different than anybody else. We deal with the same shit. So, I didn't, and I didn't want to deal with my HOA all summer, my homeowners association. So I was like, I'll just pay the extra, then they'll set it up, and then they'll get rid of it, and it'll be fantastic, right? So I got on there tonight because I thought, well, surely they would let me know exactly when they were going to deliver it, right? Because I would have to be there that day. They would have to arrange the time for me to be there for them to come and set it up, right? Okay. So I get this email, and I looked at it, and it was like, it's like, like order processed, and then like the date that they were going to send it out, and the date that it should have arrived, and not to our house, but in Indianapolis, okay? And then within two days of that, they were going to call or email me and arrange it. Now... We ordered it, are you ready? On the 3rd of June. Do you know what it said? The 27th of June is when it would be in Indianapolis. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. If that's the case, I'm calling tomorrow and I'm canceling it. Melissa and Aaron both said that Wayfair is really good customer. I was at almost 30 minutes. Melissa and Aaron both said that uh, Wayfair had really good customer service. So I guess I'll find out tomorrow because I'm telling you right now, like I'm not waiting a month for my patio furniture, okay? I waited all last year, the year before that, the year before that to have a patio that we could actually sit on. And now that I have a patio, I have to wait an entire month, you know? And not to mention that we're going on vacation. So like, what are they gonna do when they, if we're not there, you know? I'm just like, ugh. And it didn't say anything about that. It said free shipping within, and like guaranteed within a week. Yes, but what they didn't tell you was they would ship it within a week. It could take two weeks to ship, and then they would another two days for them to email you. And so, yeah, that what does make sense. It's like three weeks. And I know that's what they're going to say to me on the phone. And I'm going to be like, well, then you just need to cancel my order because I'm just going to order it from somebody else. And what they'll probably say is it's going to be the same anywhere else you go, and then we're fucked, right? <sighs> At least we'll get a use out of it in September. So it's June, it'll be July, August, and September that we'll get use out of it. But I'm just frustrated. I like really, really, really wanted to use it this month. And Alex is going out of town next weekend. It's PP and Peter's Bachelor Weekend. And when they emailed me originally, it said, shipping guaranteed by June 11th. And I stupidly read that as, why is this camera like doing this? I stupidly read that as, we'll be there on June 11th. And Alex even said to dinner tonight, because we thought we had gone into this whole, like, I thought I had got it for two-day shipping. I swear, when I ordered it, it was two-day shipping. I swear. And Alex was like, and now it doesn't say two-day shipping. And Alex was like, I cannot wait to come home on Wednesday and have that patio furniture and we can sit out there and have a glass of lemonade. And I was like, 
I've been waiting for three years to have a glass of lemonade with my husband on the patio. So uh, this is why I was saying that I spent too much money today because had I known this, okay, what I would have done was just gone right up into the Meyer or the Walmart and bought two little stupid chairs to sit out there because I've got two tall ones, but two relaxing chairs, you know, to sit out there for $100 each and I would have just said screw the haul and not do that. But since I spent my ass on beauty supplies that I probably didn't even need, but I had fun buying, um, I now spent too much money, even though I did need the cologne, which was a major part of it. But now I spent too much money and I don't want to go spend what I mean, y'all know, okay, I'm a pinch I'm a, a penny pincher. Like I watch every cent I spend. So I don't know. I'm just kind of over it. I'm kind of like, you know what? It pisses me off because like, had I known that, I wouldn't have done that. And I would have gone and bought two chairs from Walmart or something. So I'm gonna go and look and see if they have any patio furniture on sale anywhere. I don't care if I just get one chair, it just kind of rocks a little bit. And I do have the like the front, you know, the patio furniture out front, but it's like, it's old. I don't like sitting out there. I wanted to do live streams from our back patio. I wanted to ride out there this summer. But you know what? Like my good Judy Tanya says all the time, if this is the worst thing that happens in my life today, I had a really good fucking day. So, you know what? I gotta look at it that way. At least I had the money to buy patio furniture this year, you know? This place right here, let me show you, okay? If you're from Indianapolis, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's called the Sybaris. I don't know. Do you see it? Dirties. I don't know if it is uh, like a... Uh, what do you call it? Like if, um, uh, what do you call when they have them like everywhere else too? Like, uh, shoot, what's that called? Franchise. I don't know if it's a franchise, but the Sybaris, okay, is this place. When I was a kid, I always wanted to go. My dad and my stepmom went a couple times. It's one of those hotels that you don't book it for the whole night. Y'all get what I'm saying? You go there for an afternoon, right, of romance. And they have, like, mirrors everywhere. And they have actual swimming pools in there with slides and all kinds of stuff. And you can get champagne. And they have waterfalls in the middle of the hotel room. It's just basically a sex place is what it is. But upscale, it's real nice. It's like where couples go. Like, supposedly you can't go unless you're a couple. I mean, I'm sure you get around that, right? But, like... I've known so many couples that go there and they are like, I love this place. They're like, it is so romantic. It has this huge bed. They're all of them like honeymoon suites, okay? So like you're in this bedroom, but the bedroom also has like a swimming pool with a slide and a waterfall, like right in the middle of the hotel room. Can you even imagine? Okay, I'm not talking about a hot tub in the corner. I'm talking about an actual swimming pool, like 10 feet deep. And then you just get nude and do all kinds of... Can you even imagine? I mean, listen. Maybe Alex and I should do that one day. Oh my God, should we do that? In, no, we wouldn't vlog it. Not like the real thing going there. But that, I was right in the middle of telling a real good story about the Sybaris and this couple that we know that goes there. And it shut off because of the light. I didn't see the yellow light. It's probably better that uh, it stopped anyway. Because anybody that actually... I mean, and none of my friends watch my vlog. Uh, <laughs> that was obvious today by my haul. But anyway, let me say this real quick. Because I think anybody that does watch my vlog, if they knew the couple I was talking about, I probably said some details I didn't need to say. I mean, not about their sex life, because I don't know nothing about that. I don't know about y'all, but me and my friends, we don't sit around and talk about our sex lives. I don't feel like married folk do that. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bit of a prude, you know? I think that's one thing that actually would surprise people about me. I mean, I'm not a prude when it comes to my husband but at all. But I'm very much about being in a committed relationship. And I'm very much about being monogamous. And um, I've always been like that, you know, since the get-go. From my very first relationship, I've been a serial monogamist. And um, I just, I don't, like, I don't know. You know, it's interesting because my husband is somebody that makes funny sexual jokes. And to me, it's funny sometimes. And sometimes it's not funny. And he knows that. And um, I'm never uncomfortable with it. I just don't think... It depends on who we're with. You know what I mean? Like, when he does it in a video, I think it's funny. You know, depending on who we're with. But, like, if we were with the crowd that we were with tonight, it would be, like, you know, it, would, it wouldn't be anything. But, like, I don't know. With some people, that, and he doesn't do it then. But, like, that conversation just, I don't sit around and talk about my friends' 
we don't talk, but Tony and I don't talk about our sex life. We just don't. I mean, have we? Sure. But like, using appropriate terms and things like that. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense, but... I wouldn't say I'm a prude. I just would say I'm a little... I don't know. Like, you know, I mean, I've had friends in my life that will be talking, and it's mostly, honestly, I hate to say this, it's not like... I mean, I've had a few gay male friends that have talked about this, but not many. Um, straight guys, I have found overcompensate and really want to tell gay men about their sex lives. Why? I do not know. I do not need to know about... And, and I think what they misunderstand by it is, when they're when they're doing it, is that, like, most gay men, or I, I can only speak from my experience, most of my friends in my life have been primarily women. So when a straight man is talking to me sexually about a woman in a derogatory way or just making her seem like a piece of meat, it's not funny to me. It's not entertaining. It's actually really disrespectful. And I don't care if that's talking about some girl that he met in a bar and took home for a one night stand. I don't care if he's talking about a dancer, a stripper. I don't care if he's talking about his mother, a prostitute, his wife, or whoever. Okay? It's disrespectful and I don't care for it. And so, therefore, I don't have a lot of straight male friends that would, um, talk to me about that today in my life because I've kind of gotten rid of them. Like, I don't get rid of those friends, but I've kind of, like, nipped that conversation in the butt. Like, you know what? I'll say, like, I, you know, I'm not really that interested in it, honestly, okay? I don't need to know about the fact. Like, uh, you know, I had a, a friend of mine, he would say, like, oh, you know, I would, like, go down on this girl, and I'd be like, Ugh. Like, I don't need to know that. Well, what's really funny is Alex and I actually have a friend that does this or did this to us, right? And so, actually, so every time, like we would talk to some, like we would talk to him, he would say something like, um, you know, like, oh, I met this girl last night. She was so hot. Her titties were so big, and like I took her home, and he was like, oh my god, she took off her pants, and she had the hottest, you know, used all the words, okay? She had the hottest ass I'd ever seen. I just wanted to get her from behind, all this kind of stuff. I had had, I mean, I literally had had it, okay? We were driving home, like, we had gone out with him and, like, had met him out and some other friends, and we were driving home. This is a couple years ago, like, five years ago. And Alex had him on a speakerphone and was talking to him, and I looked at him, and I go, cut it off. I can't anymore, okay? I said, it's disgusting. It's revolting to me. It's so disrespectful. And I just, I'm tired of hearing it, okay? You know, once in a blue moon, baby, but this is how he talked all the time. And Alex said to him on the phone, he said, hey, let me tell you something. Something. He was like, um, last night, he was like, okay, you guys are just going to have to forgive me for just a second. But he was, <laughs> my husband doesn't ever talk like this, but he said, last night when I, when Peter and I came home, like, I was sucking his big fat dick and our friend literally got so shitty with him on the phone. He said, I don't want to hear that. That's disgusting and blah, blah, blah. He got so mad. And Alex goes, yeah, and that's exactly what you do to us every single time you call us, and you think we give a rat's ass about, or he didn't say rat's ass, I said it. He's like, you think we give a shit about you and these girls. He's like, it's gross. We don't want to hear about these girls, especially since half of them are our friends. Never said another word to us again about it. Never. It's disgusting. And I'll tell you when I really, really hate it, too, okay? And I understand. I think it's... Honestly, one of the hottest things I think in the uh, one of the things I think is the hottest thing in the entire world is when married folk find each other the hottest people that they've ever seen. Like when you lust after your husband or wife, like that shit's hot, okay? I'm sorry it is, but when you're in a married committed relationship and after 10 years of being with somebody, they walk across the room in their underwear and you still think they are the finest fucking person that ever walked in the room, now that is some hot shit, okay? I'm, it is. Because there are so many marriages that are falling apart and relationships have been together. Not just marriages. In a committed relationship that you've been dating for somebody for long periods of time. Hell, I've got a lot of friends of mine that have never gotten married and they're in committed relationships, right? That's, I, lo I think that's hot. When married couples or committed relationships find each other attractive after long periods of time. Because it's hard to keep that stuff alive, right? 
Now, I don't have a problem listening to my, you know, if, as long as they don't do it a lot because I think it's too much. But, you know, every once in a while when, you know, like, my friends that are married will be like, because I have a, quite a few straight married friends. Like, now, Jason and Eric, they would never talk this way about their wives, you know? But, like, I have friends of mine that would say, like, oh, my God, you know, like, man, we went at it for, and it still wouldn't be disrespectful. They'd say, we went at it for four hours last night, you know? Like, I just, she still exhausts me 20 years after we met each other, you know? That, to me, tell me that all day long. Just be appropriate in how you say it to me. Don't be disrespectful to your husband or your wife and how you talk to your friends about your sex life. But to say that, to me, you know, it's like, that is awesome that after 20 years, you guys still have it going on like that. And that's how I think marriage should be, you know? And we want to say that sex isn't a part of marriage, but that's bullshit. Sex is a part of marriage. It really is. And I can tell you the common denominator of most people that I know, when their marriages are falling apart and their relationships aren't working anymore, the common denominator is part but that they've just become friends and gotten comfortable with each other like roommates and they're not having sex anymore. And it's scary. And I've been in those relationships, you know? I got so many damn chopsticks. I don't even know what to do. This one's about empty. I got three of these keels right here because I got one that Hassie sent me. And then I got these other two. And then I've got this butter stick from Keels, which I love. And then I have this cocoa butter, who I don't know who sent this to me. This Palmer's cocoa butter, but this is fantastic. It's one of my favorites. Oh, and it's a little bit melt melted, so I'm gonna just put it in the free freezer at home. Oh, still works perfectly though. Why don't we talk about that more? You know, like that's one of my big complaints. Why don't we talk about the sexiness of, you know, true romance and the sexiness of committed couples? And we all want it to some degree, I think, you know? I really do. I think the majority of people, I think there's a good 5% out there, 5 to 10% that don't want to be in relationships. They've been in them and they've gotten hurt and they don't ever want to be in again. Or they just know that they're bachelors or bachelorettes for life. They know they shouldn't be in relationships or they don't want to be in relationships, okay? And I respect that. But I think the other 90% of people out there, I think really want to find their true love, their soulmate, their partner for life, their forever person, their Mr. You know, whatever. Oh, a little kitty running across the street. Thank God I made it on safely. But anyway, you know what I mean? But we don't talk about that, you know? We talk about sex jokes, and we talk about, you know, sex scenes in movies, and we talk about, oh, she looks hot, or he looks hot, and all this kind of stuff. All these things that divide, you know, this. Instead of really talking about, like, what we find sexy about, why did my wheel just start going over like that? that was weird. In the road, something about what we find sexy about our partner in a committed relationship. You know, that has been one thing that has been fantastic about my relationship with my husband. And I do think to some degree we were starting to kind of like, it, it wasn't happening very much, but we were starting to go down the road of not being as intimately linked as we had before. And I don't mean physically, I mean on all of those levels that I've talked about before that we've learned in counseling, you know, emotional, recreational, spiritual, intellectual, all of those different forms of intimacy that are important, you know, financial intimacy, um, you know, humor, uh, intimacy, sharing friends together, <coughs> sharing couples that you're friends with together, traveling together, that's recreation, you know, having intellectual conversations with that person, having discussions, you know, spiritually re uh, respecting the other person, even if you don't agree with their beliefs, things like that. All of those things that you do are helping you become more connected as a couple. And I do think that what was happening a little bit was if Alex and I were like this, well, I don't know that Alex and I were ever that closely, uh, you know, like that closely aligned um, until we went to marriage counseling and we learned about the different forms, the different buttons of intimacy, and there's 10 of them. And, you know, we started actively really working on those different forms. And I can tell you what happened was like within a period We've talked about this with each other, you know, within a period of months, like, man, I mean, I, I looked at my husband in a different way. I was like, I, I mean, I am so enamored of this person. Like I am in love and in lust with this man. You know what I mean? And it was because I knew him on a different level. I knew him on a deeper level. And he has said that he feels exactly the same way, you know, that he, like now, like he would like, 
like he's starting to laugh at the things that I say, you know, and get that sense of humor that I have. And, you know, I'll like look over and he'll just be like laughing his ass off at me talking to the dogs or something like that, you know? And he's done that for a while, but like other things too, like things that I would say in my videos, like he'll laugh, you know? And um, just us planning trips together has been fantastic. Us like buying the patio furniture together. That sounds stupid, but like, you know, that was like a, a cool thing for us to do. And, um, you know, we've had lots of conversations recently about our future and we want, where we want our future to go and things like that together. And not together as a couple, but like, where do we want to move next? Like, what do we want the next five, 10 years of our life to look like? Things like that. And, um, that's exciting, you know? And, uh, but I think it takes work and I think you have to look at your marriage <laughs> or your relationship and say, God, the moon is huge tonight. It's so pretty. If I get up here where I can show it to you, I'll see it. it's behind trees right now. But I think you have to get to the point where you say, hey, first of all, you know, like, not just I want to save this marriage because I'm afraid of going through a divorce or I'm afraid of breaking up with this person or I'm afraid of what people will think or who am I if I'm in a failed marriage or who am I if I mean, that stuff doesn't really matter. It really doesn't, okay? You're going to be okay anyway. And if you're at that point where your marriage or relationship is unsavable and you're that miserable anyway, get out. Like, if it's that un if unsavable, you know, people all the time, they email me and they're like, you know, like, it's usually women and they'll say, but I've had a couple men, too, that will say, you know, my husband and my wife or, you know, whatever, we watch your videos together and, you know, our marriage is just not that great and I really want my husband to go to marriage counseling, but he refuses to go. What do I do? And, like, absolutely refuses. And a couple times, you know, like I've said, you know, maybe you should go by your own and start and see, and maybe he'll eventually come or she'll eventually come. But the reality is, if you're at a point in your marriage where you guys are not happy and your partner is not willing to go to marriage counseling, well, your partner's basically saying, to you is, uh, I'm not really willing to do what it's going to take to save this marriage. And this marriage isn't that much of a priority to me, right? So what you need to say to that person is, you know, this marriage, this relationship is a priority to me. I want to save it at any cost. Don't you want to do the same thing? And not come at them with anger and hatred, but to come at that person with compassion. Because like for me, I was terrified to go into counseling. I didn't know what was going to come out of it, right? And so for me, it was like, you know, when Alex said to me, like, I will do, he goes, I, like we had a real deal conversation and Alex was like I cannot promise you that I will stay in this marriage forever but I will tell you one thing I can promise you is that I will do everything possible to make us have the best marriage you know that we could possibly have but you have to meet me in the middle and be willing to do the same thing and that was scary to me you know because I was like okay now Alex is really willing to lay it on the line and do everything to make our marriage the greatest marriage in the entire world, or I can just sit back and watch it possibly just fall apart. And I'm so thankful that I was like, okay, get in line, you know? And I had some boundaries that I wanted. The guy had to, you know, know about recovery and all this kind of stuff. And it had to, you know, I wanted somebody that was like a, um, male that was straight. I didn't want to go to a gay counselor. I had a lot of friends of mine that went to gay counselors and it all became about them being a gay couple. And that's just not how I look. I mean, I, we are a gay couple, but that's not how I looked at it. I wanted to look at somebody that knew about couples counseling and intimacy, not gay couples counseling and intimacy. Because on some level, I don't think there's a lot of difference. I really don't, but that's just me. And he has been fantastic for us. I'll never forget when he whipped that paper at us about those different forms of intimacy and he said, practice these for the next week and we're going to talk if this was like the last two minutes of a session he goes do something for each of these forms of intimacy in the next week and next week I want to hear what you guys did that's your homework for the week I was like okay and he had us read some books that were great you know it's just been really good for us fight for your marriage fight for your relationship my god you fought to get in a relationship with that person didn't you I think we forget about that. You know, when we really want to be with somebody, when we really want to date somebody and pick up the phone and we can't wait to see them, you know? And when, damn, we wish we didn't have to work today so we could spend the day with that person. But then 10, 15, five years go by. We don't feel that way much anymore. You know, we don't want to fight for that marriage. Fight for that marriage. It's worth it. I'm telling you, you know? It is. And my friends of mine that have been married, you know, are together for 10 or 15, 20 years, and they still look at each other across the room, and, you know, like, Alex does this thing with me, man, I'm telling you right now, whenever he does this, I'm like, okay, we need to leave now. He can be across the room, 100 feet away, and look at me, and he can wank, and I am like, ooh, 
That is some hot shit right there, okay? And, uh, and he knows it, too. He knows that's the one thing. And, um, you know, like, that couple, and that's who I want to be. That's who I aim to be is that one, that couple, you know, that they've been together 30 years and they still look at each other like, you know, and not that they have perfect every day because people fight, people argue, you know, but they do things for each other. They're considerate of each other. And then, you know, they just, you can tell they're just so in love with each other. That's, you know, I think that's what I want. And there's no reason why you can't have that. That's not to say, okay, that shit doesn't happen in relationships that is unforeseeable that maybe you gotta make a decision to go your separate ways, okay? I mean, let's just be for real. There are abusive relationships that people should not stay in, but before you rush out of it, I will say this as a caveat. Do not rush out of it until you've you know, sought out professional help that will teach you how to do that, okay? Because those are very dangerous situations and I don't want you getting advice from a video on how to leave an abusive relationship because it's just not that easy, okay? There's a lot more involved with that and sometimes the abuse gets worse if a person leaves or threatens leaving. But you know, there's other things that happen in a relationship, you know, that, you know, people have to say like, you know, I was worried early on with Alex because you know, he was done with school and I thought, well, hell, what if Alex says tomorrow, I want to move to Texas. I got a job opportunity there. And I had no desire to move to Texas. And when we got together, honest to God, one of the first things he said to me was, I said something to him about deal breakers. And he said, I will live in Miami. And he said, and that is a deal breaker. So if you don't want to move to Florida, there's no reason for us to continue that. He said this to me and I can tell you for a long time, I kind of was like, I don't want to move to Florida. I've been in Indiana my entire life. It's terrifying to me to imagine moving. I am very scared of that, which is why Alex and I have agreed that we're going to keep the condo here and also have a place in Florida and go back and forth. Um, and he's totally fine with that. It, and it makes me feel safer. And then I'll always have a place here. I can come and visit my family or my friends or whatever, you know? My recovery is here too. Not to mention, I mean, not to mean that I couldn't get my recovery somewhere else, but this is where I started my recovery here, you know? This video is gonna be so long tonight. But, I think like, I don't know. You gotta, I, you just have to fight for your relationship. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Early on, you know, like, I was worried that Alex might wanna move somewhere for a job opportunity or something, you know? And I was kind of at the end of my career and he was at the beginning of his career. And, and I thought, oh God, please don't let it come down to like, Alex gets a job and then I'm gonna have to either move or we're gonna have to break up. Like, that was a fear for both of us. And um, he just wasn't finding stuff that he really enjoyed doing here until he got kind of in a certain field of what he does. And then he like started really enjoying that and he didn't really expect to ever enjoy that whatsoever. And, um, and that was weird how that kind of unfolded. And, uh, but you know, like that's something, I mean, I think there's all kinds of things. I will say this, you know, having now been in marriage counseling and, you know, all kinds of, we've, we've discussed every possible scenario of things that could come up. And I don't think there's anything that you can't work through in a relationship. I mean, I think, I think there's some things that are really, really hard. I think addictions are really hard to work through in relationships. Um, especially if somebody's not willing to change, you know, I, I think like, I don't know what I think about abuse. I think, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's safe. You know, I think it's a safety issue at that point. And um, I will tell you in my pr practice and in my experience, what's interesting is I I've known as many abused, um, ab you know, and in different ways too, but let's just physically, I've known as many abused men as I, I have women. It's, and it's not just, you know, men that are abused by women. And I think that there's a stigma attached to it that they're weak. And so we don't talk a lot about that. But the whole work, the whole, that whole field of domestic abuse is so scary and so dangerous. Like, that's why I say, don't just say, okay, I saw Peter say this in a video, I'm leaving tomorrow. Find professional help. 
find professional help. There are shelters, there are counselors that will help you for free in your area. Seek them out, get guidance on how to do it. It is not just something that you come up with out of yourself. It is a very dangerous situation. And those people need help, and until they get that help, you're not safe. Um, so, I don't know. I just think, like, you know, but outside of, like, a lot of those issues and, you know, whatever. I mean, other things that happen in marriages, I think. I, I know a lot of people that get divorced over financial stuff, you know, debt and stuff like that. And I'm like, I can't imagine, like, I don't know. I'm not saying that Alex and I have never had an argument over money, because we have, but not very often we don't argue over it, because we just don't let it go there, And you know what I mean? All right, you guys, I think I'm like at an hour and 15 minutes at this point, so I'm going to get off here, but if you've learned anything from my vlog tonight, fight for your relationship. If you're in a relationship, think about all the people that you know that aren't in a relationship and would love to be in one, and then ask yourself what it was like when you first met that person. Do you still want to save the relationship? I mean, do you still love them? And if you do, be willing to do whatever it takes to save the relationship. That is why I talk so openly about marriage counseling and my marriage marriage and my vlogs, because I want this to be some real fucking shit. I'm sorry to cuss, but that's just the reality we had, okay? I want people to watch this and be like, you know what? I so relate to what he's saying. All marriages, all relationships are hard at times, but you can make it through the rocky times. And I'll tell you this, the tough times are what make your relationship stronger. That is the truth right there, okay? You're going to go through some tough shit, and those tough times are the ones that make your relationship stronger. Trust me. Okay, as somebody that's been in now three long-term relationships and my last one that I'm in right now having been almost 10 years and I'm very proud of it. And we've been through some tough times. And, uh, you know, fight for that relationship. It's worth it. I, tr I promise you it's worth it. And um, sometimes the relationship you'll have on the other side after fighting for it, it will be 100 times better. So... I wish you guys all the best. I love you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.